Hi everybody, thanks for joining in. Jamie here, aka Mr. Fit Geek. In this video, I want to talk about the difference between Spotify and Apple Music from a music discovery point of view. This is one of several videos that there's going to be in this series because I think to review both Spotify and Apple Music require several videos because actually there's a lot to cover. So specifically what I want to talk about is how as streaming platforms and music platforms they enable us as users to discover new music. So particularly useful if you're new or you've been thinking about it for a while and which one should I go for, which one should I cough up my hard-earned money for to subscribe to to get the best out of. So a little bit of history, Apple Music is only a few years old now, whereas Spotify has been going, I think, now for over 10 years. Uh, obviously, Spotify is a Swedish company, but Apple Music is obviously part of, of Apple. The difference being that Spotify is predominantly the leader in streaming platforms and has been ever since it, it was launched. And yes, there are other services out there, such as Deezer, Amazon Music, Google Play Music, uh, Tidal, they have come along since, but Spotify is definitely the leader. But Apple Music hasn't taken long to really get uh, a huge user base in there. Um, and partly because it's automatically pre-installed, the music icon on every single iPhone, iPad, Mac, uh, that there is around the world. So obviously there are millions of those devices, so therefore it makes it much easier to, to get a hold of it there. Um, but there's some real key differences in the services, uh, and in particular about music discoverability I want to cover here. So let's start off by uh, some, of the, some of those key differences. Now with Spotify, um, how they predominantly work is on a kind of uh, an, an algorithmic approach. Um, they like to recommend music to you and help you find new music by carefully listening to you, your habits, what you, what music you've listened to, you've tuned into, uh, the genres that you listen to, and from that it recommends stuff to you. Now when Apple launched, they kind of prided themselves, I think, on, on coming out with, they use curators and music experts to put music together into playlists, which then is recommended to you. But since then, they have tweaked it ever so slightly in that they now offer up some algorithmic-based recommendations to you. So let's compare uh, a couple of their different services and how they work. So Spotify, for example, have two main playlists they recommend to you each week that are done on an algorithmic um, basis. They have Discover Weekly, which is on a Monday, and they have Loose Radar, which is on a Friday. Discover Weekly being uh, a, a playlist of 30 songs. So they can be old songs, they can be new songs, they might be songs that you have maybe listened to previously, but it's based on what you listen to, and they're basically saying, right, you listen to this type of music, you might listen to some dance, to some R&B, to some rock, to this artist, to that artist, you listen to this playlist this many times, this plays that many times, all this data they have, and then they serve up this to you on a Monday morning. So then you have this 30 songs downloaded straight to your phone or your device, whatever you're using. Then on a Friday they have Release Radar, and Release Radar is slightly different in that it, all the songs on Release Radar are new songs that have been released. So it's like your Friday, um, your new Friday playlist is based on new tracks. So this is a way to help you discover maybe new artists, a bit more than Discover Weekly, um, but certainly new music that has come out. Apple have it done, they do it slightly differently. So on a Tuesday, they have your favourites mix. So your favourites mix is based on songs that you do listen to quite a lot, so songs that you love, and they they, they chuck in there a few guesses around, well, if you listen to this artist or this genre, you're probably going to like this one. But generally, it's a safe bet that what they're recommending to you is music that you do listen to. Uh, so they're not going to throw too many curveballs in there. And on a Friday, they have what's called their new music mix. Now, their new music mix, again, a bit like Spotify's release radar, is all new music that has just been released. Um, and what they're trying to do here is recommend to you new artists that you might not have listened to, as well as new songs. Um, and again, that this is done on an algorithmic basis. And then on a Sunday, they have a fairly new one called Chill Mix. Um, bit of a random one. I suppose it makes sense on a Sunday because most, well, people perceive Sundays as being a relaxed day. But the Chill Mix being whatever your, whatever your predominant genre of music you tend to listen to, then they tend to select chilled songs from that genre and put it into a 25 song playlist that then comes to you on a, on a Sunday. There are other playlists that, that do happen as well um, across the across the uh, the services. Um, 
but they tend to work in a bit of a different way and they're not quite as personalised as the what, these ones. The one exception is Spotify, uh, where Spotify also do something called your daily mix. And your daily mix are six kind of continuous playlists that just change every day, but they are based on, uh, you could play a daily mix and it might be based on uh, particular genres or artists that you love and they tend to do six different types so for example on mine I tend to have one that's quite pop oriented one that's quite dance I have a rock one a latin one a quite chilled one and the one that's quite ambient and kind of electronic and so at any point if I'm like I don't know what I want to listen to but I just kind of listen to stuff like that you can just press play and it's just a continuous continuous playlist so even when it kind of gets to the end it will then just keep playing songs based on what's in that playlist. So it's really, it's really good. It's a really, really uh, sort of kind of clever idea. Then playlists in general, Spotify um, have obviously a massive range of playlists and you can select playlists from different artists, from a genre of music, from your mood. And whilst Apple also have that as well, it seems to be much more limited in terms of the mood, for example. There's only a few moods on Apple that you can choose from. Whereas on Spotify, there is a whole plethora of moods. And what I've noticed with Spotify is that they update their moods as well to, um, and their genres to take into, into account seasonality. So over Christmas, where you have your section where you can find your playlist, they'll have a whole season's greetings one. And they'll just put in all their Christmas and all their festive playlists that are in there. And whilst on Apple Music, yes, there are a bunch of Christmas playlists, they don't quite serve it up to you in quite the same way. I would kind of categorise the two services as, in two words, one for Apple, one for Spotify. I would say Spotify is dynamic, and I would say Apple is static. And what I mean by that is, take Apple for example, when you first start using Apple Music, it will take into consideration, if you've used an iTunes library before, what's in your iTunes library, what you've purchased previously. You then select when you set up the service, which genres you like and then which artists you like. And then based on that information you input into the system, that's how it helps to make recommendations to you. But the reason I call it static is when every day you go to your music app and you click on the For You icon that is in Apple Music, that will ultimately <laughs> we have a visitor that will ultimately recommend to you six or seven playlists as well but they're not personalized playlists they're just playlists where apple kind of go you kind of like this you kind of like that we think you'll like these playlists and they're set they're set each morning they're set um for that day done so it's quite static in how it's kind of operated it's you like this you like this we're going to give you this Spotify, the reason I call it dynamic is because you can be using Spotify throughout the day and you might log on to Spotify in the morning and what it will do is say, right, it's morning time, we're going to recommend these playlists to you because we think it's appropriate for the time of day. So often if I, if I start to use it in the morning, which I do, it will have, you know, um, playlists around waking up, um, coffee, you know, breakfast time, chilled classics. So things you might listen to in the morning, it's not then saying to you, um, you know, rock hits from the 60s at seven o'clock in the morning, because you kind of might not want to listen to that at that time in the morning. You might, but it's hazarding, I guess, that you might want to have slightly softer music playing. You could then go on Spotify at 10.30 in the morning when you're sat at your desk at work, and then it's saying coffee break time, the office stereo. It's kind of recommending stuff to you based on the time of day as well. So it's much it's much cleverer in how it's serving music to you. And at any point throughout the day when you log on to the app, it, it will look different and the music recommendations it's making to you are different. You log on to Apple Music first thing in the morning, you have your um, your set playlists at the top, your recommended playlists, um, your personalised ones. Then you have uh, your playlist for the day and then some artist spotlight playlists. But they don't change throughout the day, whereas Spotify's do. There's no two ways about it here that the algorithm behind Spotify is living, it's live, and it's moving all the time. So which do I prefer? Well, this is where it gets tricky. It's because there are several reasons why I love Spotify and several reasons why I love Apple Music, and I tend to use them in conjunction with each other. I kind of tend to use Spotify as a way to discover new music, but I also use Apple Music 
on my iPhone in which I then download and store the music. So quite often what I will do is, is as I said, use Spotify to discover, and I listen to Spotify a lot. I use it to stream to my Sonos system around the home. Um, I use it in the car. So I love to listen to Spotify and stream most of my music from there because obviously the more you use it, the more it listens to you and the more it recommends stuff to you. Um, I tend to do that less for Apple. But then if I want to have songs downloaded, so if I'm going traveling, if I'm on the plane, if I'm on a train, hit a tunnel, I want to have lots of offline music. So I then do that on Apple Music, download it to the phone, and then I've got it for offline stuff if I can't stream. Apple haven't quite got the knack, I don't think, of music discoverability. They have tons of playlists, and when you dig through the surface of it, there is a lot there. But ultimately, they don't, I don't think they surface up some of the great stuff that they have, and they don't do it in, they don't do it in this compelling and user-friendly way that Spotify do. And in Spotify's case, sometimes it's quite scary how well they know your music tastes and how well they're going to serve up stuff to you. Sometimes they get it wrong. Don't get me wrong. They sometimes offer some real, oh, crikey. I mean, on Monday, sometimes I've had some right rubbish that's been recommended to me. But generally, I'd say 80% of the time, they get it pretty, pretty good. Apple Music, not so much the case. So that's how I break it down from discoverability. Now, there are so many other reasons why you should choose one, or the other. But for me, in this first round, if it's music discoverability that you're after and for a way to, to listen to new artists, new bands, new songs, new albums, Spotify are definitely the winner in this round. Stay tuned for some more videos. We might be interrupted again by my cat William. We might not be. But either way, I'm a new, this is quite a new channel here, so if you're a new subscriber, um, thanks so much for coming back. If you haven't subscribed yet and you want to, please do so. Help me build this channel. Uh, drop me a thumbs up. Any questions, I'd love to hear what people think and how you currently use Spotify and Apple Music. And uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers, take care, bye.